I'm your host, Logan23, you're joining me for My First Two Loves, Chapter 38, Decisions, Decisions. When people say they're between a rock and a hard place, it usually means they're faced with two hard decisions. Well, what do you call it when you have two good options? Still the same. I thought about it, as Noah and I snuck back down from the roof, his hand laced in mine. As fun as this was, I think I still owe you a dance. Hmm. Being alone with you on the roof will be hard to top, though. Don't worry. I can deliver. Noah Harris! We both froze, and I was sure we'd been caught coming back from the roof. When I turned around... I don't mean to interrupt your dance, but I was hoping to catch you before I headed out. Um, sorry, who are you? Wait, you sat down next to me at the homecoming game. Are you a football scout? Indeed. Scott Andrews, college scout from the National Association of Undergraduate Athletics. As you likely know, each year we select one standout athlete and fund a full scholarship to the college of their choice. You're interested in choosing me? That homecoming game was truly something else. I'm also speaking to Mason Jennings, the other star quarterback. Just then Mason and his father appeared in the hallway. Dad, what's going on? Thanks for setting a few minutes aside for my boy, Scott. Why don't you boys help me uh, get to know you better? Why should I pick you? All my life I've dreamed of playing quarterback for the Air Force. Just like my dad. Just like your dad, huh? So, is that your dream or his? Like father, like son. Nothing wrong with that. Of course, of course. What about you, Noah? To be honest, Mr. Andrews, football is my lifeblood. It gives me focus, drive. Ah, uh, Scott, I, I know you want to be fair, but I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you Mr. Harris has a bit of a history. Principal Jennings... Sounds like someone's bias. Noah's past has nothing to do with his future. Arrows don't change directions mid-flight. Where he came from is an indication of where he's going to land. Absolutely nowhere fast. Hmm... My boy Mason here, on the other hand, records clean as a whistle. That's enough, Dad. No one may be, may be my competition, but I want to win the scholarship the right way. Mr. Andrews, I promise you that my history is just that. History. Unfortunately, your principal does have a point. Character matters. Mr. Andrews, can't you give it more time? The more you talk to them, the more I think you'll see they both deserve the scholarship. Both boys definitely caught my eye, but money doesn't grow on trees. There's only enough for one of you. Scott, I'd like a word. You kids, get back to the dance. Try to enjoy yourselves. Wow. As they left, the three of us eyed each other awkwardly. There was one too many of us here to enjoy the evening. Look, Noah, my dad can be uh, kind of a tool. It's fine. You used to it. No, uh... Let's get back to the dance, Emma. If you're sure. Music rocked the dance floor as we returned to the gym. It's too bad we uh, never actually got to dance together. What are you talking about? We danced when we got here. For 30 seconds after the night. After that, this night has been one surprise after the next. I glanced down in the dim lighting, but Noah cooked a finger under my chin and tipped my head back until I met his eyes. No more interruptions. Just you, me, and the dance for you game. I could tell dancing would take his mind off the drama with the scout, and all I wanted was to be as close to him as possible. Oh, Principal Jennings can literally go himself. They say third time's a charm, right? If we're lucky, but I've got a song I think you're gonna love. Let me talk to the JJ and I'll meet you on the dance floor. He slipped through the crowd, and a moment later, a suggestive pop song came blaring out of the speakers. Let's make our exit. Can't keep my hands off of you now. And I know you don't want me to stop. Oh, I reappeared behind me with a spur. So, what do you think? Hmm, I think the lyrics speak for themselves. I can't keep my hands off of you. 
I put my hands on his waist and felt my way up his rippling abs to the hard muscles of his chest. He inhaled slowly. And judging by the look in your eye, I don't think you want me to stop. Actually, I say we uh, take this show public. He led me out to the center of the floor and all eyes around the room followed our path. Show me what you got. Someone's sure of himself. I hope you're ready. Now it spun me until his chest pressed against my back and we ground our hips together in time to the beat. Noah kept his hands at my waist, holding me close. He did say he wanted to spice things up. I'm gonna drop it like it's hot. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Take control. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. I body rolled against him and dropped to the floor. I bent at the waist all the way up, giving him the sexiest grin I could ever open my shoulder. How's that for dirty dancing? I'm really regretting not getting you alone for this. Hmm, that was the goal. From the sidelines, people whooped and whistled as we faced each other, thrusting our hips together. Noah crossed my cheek and rested his forehead on mine. Our breaths mixed as we panted. Things are getting hot, hot, hot on the dance floor. Check out the two lovebirds. A bright spotlight found us in the crowd, and I look up to catch Noah smiling at me. Here's that attention we ordered. Hmm, then it's time to turn it up a notch. Because that already wasn't turned up. Shake what my mama gave me. Have Noah carry me. Eh, shake what your mama gave you, I guess. I whipped around and pressed my backside against Noah before popping, swiveling, and shaking it with everything in me. The crowd went wild as he matched me thrust for thrust, and his hands found my waist, pulling me in until we were practically one body. Just like that, this is homecoming no one's ever gonna forget, and it's all thanks to you. More like thanks to us. As the music began to wind down, I wrapped my hands around his shoulders and pressed my face into the crook of his nag. I was like, this party's almost over. It doesn't have to be. Hey, DJ. My date here has a request. What can I do for you? I say we... Keep the party going. Good choice. Let's redirect our energy with this electro bomb. Oh, God. Soon the bass bumped loud enough to shake the whole room around us. Our classmates bounced to the beat. Together, Noah and I head banged to the beat. Seniors, let me hear you scream! Uh, shut up, Chad. All around us, our classmates yelled at the top of their lungs, but Noah rolled his eyes. Not a fan of call and response? Hmm, I can think of better things to do with my mouth. Like this. Noah bowed his head and pressed his lips to my jawline. He skimmed my skin, nipping gently until he reached the corner of my mouth. My lips parted in anticipation, and the door to the gym opened and Scott Andrews stepped through. Hmm. He waved us over from the edge of the gym. We approached him. Every step felt like a walk to the gallow. I didn't want to keep you boys in suspense. You're both excellent players, but I have to go with my gun. Mason, congratulations. We'd like to move forward with you. I'll be in touch. He patted Noah on the back and turned for the exit, leaving the three of us behind in shock. Mason was the first to react. Hey, Noah, I... Noah whirled on him, and after seeing the fury in his eyes, I couldn't help but take a step back. Don't. We both know this has nothing to do with football and everything to do with your dad. You don't know that. Are you planning on using that excuse for everything? Hey, arguing won't change anything. No matter what happened, it's too late now. There's no point in fighting over it. But the boys were both past the point of listening to me. No matter what I achieve, it'll never matter. People like you will always be first in line. Don't try to pin this on me. You heard what Scott said about character. Just look in the mirror. <sighs> All about the juvie thing, huh? Noah lunged at Basin, and from there, the fight was a violent flurry of punches and grapples. I flinched as Mason slammed Noah hard into a speaker, knocking it over with a loud thump. The girl screamed as Noah retaliated by punching Mason in the face. Oh my god! Stop it, stop it! 
I try to get between them and Mason wipe blood from his mouth while Noah spat on the floor. What the hell is wrong with you two? Both boys gaped at me, shocked by the anger in my tone. Emma, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. They wanted me to absolve them of what they've done, but I couldn't. I just watched the two of my favorite people beat the hell out of each other. I'm done. Can't you see how much this is hurting me? I can't bear this any longer. I can't do this with either of you. Before either boy could respond, Principal Jennings was upon us, shoving the crowd aside as he stalked over to Mason and Noah. Enough, you two in my office. Everyone else now. Now this dance is over. The lights came on. The boys were dragged away, and the chaperones ushered us out of the gym, which, by the way, where were the chaperones this entire time? Before I knew it, I was standing on the curb, shivering with no way home. Then a familiar car pulled up in front of me and rolled down the window. Need a ride? Am I that obvious? To me, always, get and loser. When I got into the car, I was surprised to see Ava's smeared mascara that she'd been crying. She hadn't seen that in the chat. Was the breakup really hitting her that hard? Really, are you this obnoxiously just ignorant? Ava, I'm so sorry about everything. Yeah, it's been a year. And I'm sorry about Mason and Noah. Sounds like a mess. I shouldn't have been dating them both like this. Sometimes it's like I don't even know my own heart. Oh my god, shut the hell up, Pixelberry. I know what it's like, not really knowing what's in your heart. I I think I've been lying to myself for a long time about who I really am, what I really want. And I need to be honest to you now, too. What do you mean? Honest about what? I thought that once I started dating guys, I'd get what all the fuss was about. But I think I learned something entirely different. My head was spanning. What was she saying? She's in the girls, and you're specifically one of the girls. That's what. You Hi, I'm I'm Jiminy Cricket. Hi, long time no see. As we pulled up to my house, Ava reached out and put her hand on mine. My heart pounded as I felt her soft, warm skin resting against mine. I'll walk you out. We walked down my driveway countless times before, but tonight, the air felt charged, different. And then she looked at me. The moonlight glinted off her cheeks, her hair, her body. Oh, is this where we find our true love? I thought the other two were the true loves. <sighs> Memories flooded back to me. The times Ava helped me up when I was down. Just like tonight. The exhilaration I felt when I realized the coolest, prettiest girl I knew wanted to be my friend. The afternoons we joked it'd be easy if we ditched the boys and dated each other instead. I feel like for the first time I finally get it. I see everything so clearly. She was so close. Her soft breath tickled my hair, her skin. Her lips were mere inches from mine. And if I closed the distance right there in that moment, I realized that maybe Mason and Noah were the only ones I had feelings for. <sighs> for the love of Christ. I, Ava, you say you see everything so clearly, but for me, I'm more confused than ever. When aren't you? With that, Ava pulled slowly back and stared at me thoughtfully. I understand. I'm sorry, it's just so much has happened tonight. She shook her head as if to say it was all right and pulled me into a tight hug. Well, I'm here if you need me. Give me a call sometime. We can talk about anything. As Ava's sedan receded into the distance, I stared up at the night sky. Just hours ago, I'd felt closer than I ever, knowing who I wanted to be with. Now I knew I was further than ever, and yet I didn't feel like crying anymore. The sky held a thousand lights, a thousand options, and for a moment I let myself feel lost there, basking in the faint light of an infinite possibilities. Hey, you know what I noticed? Today, chapter 39 will not be happening. Hmm, I should Google that and maybe see why. Or someone I'm sure will post in the comment section. Without further ado... For the love of God. You know, okay, so can I give you guys a little tidbit of information? Alright, so here you go. We literally started back right where we started. Remember? It was the front porch, the two boys, 
Like, we're all back where we started. Now we've got Ave on the front porch. Same shit. Different day. Difference is someone isn't watching us or stumbling upon us or some crap like that. Oh, that's really bad writing when you have to circle back to things countless times. Like, there is a million other th things that this girl needs to be concerned about. She's supposedly supposed to be a senior in, in, in high school. She's not worried about high school at all. She's not worried about college. She's not worried about anything except for her love life. Let me tell you, kids, that's not how this shit works, okay? That's not how this shit's supposed to work. Now we're supposed to have, quote-unquote, three love interests. Mmm, doesn't that make the title of this book kind of irrelevant? I'm just saying. It wouldn't it be my first three loves? Unless, literally, they're going to make this a polyamorous book, and then it's, you know, you fall in love with two of your three love interests, and they are willing to accept an open loan relationship. I doubt Pixelberry would be that open-minded, but even then, the stoop this story is still stupid. Thanks for watching. Peace out.